I'm Dr. Ruth Newstifter here with AAMFT. Today we're interviewing Dr. Elders, the 15th Surgeon General of the United States and our opening plenary speaker at the 2012 Annual Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Elders, it is an honor and a pleasure to be able to interview you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Elders, we're seeing a sudden focus on women's health issues across the nation, especially at the state level. How do you see the roles of women evolving in response to these political trends? You know, I think the roles of women have been evolving in our society in a long, t- for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And I take it as very positive. The health and education of any nation is directly related to the health and education of its women. If we want to decrease poverty and improve economic status, we've got to educate and prepare our women. We've got, if we want to have increased health, but we need to make sure that we have our women prepared and healthy and able to do this. Of the women are very important to be involved in uh, improving our political uh, issues. If we want to decrease the social and behavioral behavioral problems that are happening in our society, such as drugs, alcohol, smoking, homicide, I think it's important that we educate and have our women prepared and to have an increasing role in this area. And if we want to improve the quality of life. Uh, and uh, So we want to have healthy people in healthy communities. And you can't keep uh, society healthy. It's not educated. As we're looking at all these things that are happening politically, a lot of the trends seem to be around physical health care as well as education, as you mentioned. Where would you see family therapists fitting into the picture, especially with regards to women's health needs? I see family therapists uh, fitting into this picture in, uh, in if as a family therapist, they're trying to improve and make the family healthier. And, you know, physical health is more than absence of disease. It's about mental health, emotional health, psychological health, and all the things, all the things we need to me. All of those things are very critical to being healthy. Healthy communities, what goes on with our involvement in church, our friends at work. So I see family therapy as being very important in helping women to be able to take on the, these multitasking roles which they have and to realize that, uh, you know, you don't have to do everything perfectly. Just do them as best you can and to find a place that you want to fit. And I think, and, 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 and do that. You know, so we, we don't have to be completely wiped out by what, the world thinks our role should be. I think we should decide what we think our role should be and try and become happy, content, and do that as best we can. And one of the things that you're working on right now, you have so many great projects, but this one just really caught my eye, is uh, the exciting project you're doing with the University of Minnesota right now. Could you tell us more about the sexual health education chair and especially how it might impact mental health professionals? Yeah, yeah I think the, this Sexual Health Education Chair at the University of Minnesota is very important and very critical to me, and I'm very pleased that they're naming it the Joycelyn Elders Chair in Sexual Health Education. What we want to do is make sure that we educate not only doctors. You know, the reason why we doctors don't do a better job in talking about sexual health is because we don't know how. Nobody ever really taught us how, but we've got to not only teach our doctors and our, all of our health care professionals, nurses and therapists and everyone else, we've got to also begin to educate, like our ministers. You know, our, you know, our ministers don't understand how to talk with our families uh, and our young people about sexual health. And I think that this is something that we've got to do. We've been a sexually illiterate society. And we wonder why we have all of the consequences of, of, of dysfunctional sexual health. You know, we tell our young boys to go out and score 
and we tell our girls to be a virgin. And I wonder who in the world do we think they're going to score with. But we've got to teach them both that they've got to be responsible. You know, how to be, you know, we're sexual beings from birth until death. And we've got to teach our society how to accept that and not spend all of our energy fighting about trying to stop young people from being sexually active. Their hormones are raging. They're saying, wow, go out and get involved. And all of our lessons are saying, oh, well, just say no. I, you know, we all support abstinence. But most of all, we res- want them to be responsible. And we want to decrease the consequences of being involved sexually when they aren't ready, such as teenage pregnancy, HIV disease, sexually transmitted disease. So we want to markedly decrease the consequences of being involved in sex and not necessarily just sex. We know that if you're abstinent, you won't have to worry about any of that. But by the same token, our bodies and our minds and everything else is telling us to, you know, to go out and be sexual. You know, sexuality is not, or involved in sex, is not just for procreation. We have to think of the three P's of sexuality. One, procreation, protection, and pleasure. And we've just completely wiped out the pleasure principle. Absolutely. And as you're talking about that and you're bringing out pleasure, that that makes me think of the important role that family therapists can play in that context of making sure that, you know, the situation is healthy, safe, and emotionally and physically pleasurable for, for the people we work with. Yeah. Very important. As a field that cares deeply about families and young people, what message would you most like to share with family therapists now and at your upcoming plenary session? (laughs) Well, you know, I think the uh, thing that the message that I would most like to share with them is to, uh, one, is to have our people all to understand uh, that sexual health and in well-being is very important and very critical, and that we want uh, we want them all people to lead a sexually healthy life, rather than sexual dysfunction. And that this starts early. We have to make sure that we use all of the available resources to uh, that are out there to keep our society and our young people safe and healthy. We realize we don't want the condoms will break. But always remember that the vows of abstinence break far more easily than latex condoms. <laughs> and that abstinence only, it, that's a, we've got a head-on collision of our culture, of, of our nation with the realities of what's going on. And our nation has never been abstinent. And we, but we want them to be responsible. So we need to be honest. We need to make sure they're educated and empowered so that they can be responsible. Dr. Elders, that is a powerful message, and I thank you so much. I can't think of a better person to be kicking off our annual conference on the evolving roles of women, and uh, your message is so critical. Thank you for bringing it to us at our upcoming conference. Well, It's a real pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. And if you would like to hear more from her, then you won't want to miss this year's annual conference where she will be our opening plenary speaker. It'll take place this September in Charlotte, North Carolina. You can learn more at www.aamft.org. 